So whether you're gay, straight, or somewhere in between, you've probably watched something pornographic in your life and thought, damn, that is a big dick. And my goodness, that person seems very turned on by how large that phallus is. And then you uh, look down at your own self and you think, hmm, well that's a little bit different, isn't it? How unfair. How unfair that that person seems to be so turned on by that gigantic phallus and I don't feel like I live up. So maybe you've had that experience or an experience like it. Or maybe you just simply grab some produce and think, hmm, I feel like I'm a little bit more like this and I'd rather be a little bit more like this. Well, maybe not that. That seems a little bit excessive. You may have found yourself wondering, is there anything that I can do to make my dick bigger? And if I do, will that bring me a more ecstatic life? Will that bring me more joy? Will that bring me more personal fulfillment? And if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit subscribe along with the bell next to it to get notifications about next videos that I post. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, Kay, you run a YouTube channel on ecstatic spirituality and coming home to yourself and sex and sexuality. Does talking about making your dick bigger actually fall in line with that target message? To which I enthusiastically reply, yes, it absolutely does. Now, maybe this is different for other men, but for me, my penis brings me tremendous joy. I love playing with it, I love touching it, I love looking at it in a mirror, I love taking pictures of it and talking to other people about it. With their consent, right? I don't ever wanna foist it upon somebody. But I love my cock and it brings me tremendous pleasure both physically, emotionally, and also spiritually. If you've watched my other YouTube videos, you know that I use sexual techniques and sexual pleasure as a way to create spiritual energy and move towards enlightenment and wholeness and healing and personal growth. And for me, there is something erotic and sexy and fulfilling and sensual and fun about the notion of how can I make this thing that brings me tremendous joy even bigger, even more full, even more arousing for me. Now, I do wanna put a caveat and disclaimer right here. I am not a medical professional. I am not offering advice that you should be following. If you try any of these things or explore any things, this is on you. I am not to be held accountable in any way, shape, or form. I am also not endorsing any products or technique or specific people to follow. I'm just saying over my years of curiosity about dick enlargement, this is stuff that I've researched far too many hours on and explored personally myself. So I guess we should probably start with the question that many of you are probably asking, which is, Kay, have you actually done this? Has it actually worked for you? To which my answer is an enthusiastic, yes, I actually have. It's something that I have explored off and on since my very late teenage years, when I started college, through my 20s, and have recently gotten back into. And so I can, I can verify that, yes, you can have substantial changes in both length and girth if you do these things consistently over time. And with patience and deafness, that you're paying attention to how your body's responding, it can make you healthier, it can give you better erections, have more frequent erections, have more stamina in bed, so it can make you better rather than diminish you, because I know that's some people's concern. Now, this is YouTube so I am not going to be showing any pictures, so you're gonna to have to take my word and my experience for it at face value, or at dick value, as it were. Before we get into the nitty gritty of what your options are, what do you do, how do you do it, I think the most important thing to start with is self-evaluation. Because at the end of the day, we need to know for ourselves, why is this something that matters? For me now, pursuing dick growth, I do because it brings me joy. I love the feeling of having more down there, of the looks I get in the locker room, and how I feel when I see a photograph of myself, I find all that really fulfilling. It feels good. Like I'm doing this for me. But there was an earlier part of my life where that was not the case. Where I pursued this because I felt inadequate. I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I wasn't enough of a man. And that's not as fun of a reason to be doing it. I always think in life we should do things from a place of fullness and celebration rather than feelings of lacking. And if you're doing this because you find that a specific sexual partner would enjoy increased length or girth or additional stimulation in that way, and that's something you've discussed with them, then great, that's another valid reason to do this. But if you're pursuing any sort of body modification because I think it will make you happier as a human being, I would look long and hard at that. Because bodies continuously change, standards of beauty continuously change, and so long as you're chasing an outward goal and external approval, there's going to be a feeling of lack and that happiness is going to be elusive. And not that there is anything inherently wrong with external approval. You may or may not know this about my personal sexual history based on my previous YouTube channels. You know, the first three people I asked out, 
when I was in college. One laughed in my face, the next stood me up, the third said they didn't remember me asking them out. I was a virgin until I was 25 years old because I felt so awkward and unattractive and like nobody would ever want me as me. It's not a good position to be approaching self-modification from. The work I had to do first and foremost was come home to myself, find myself sacred and beautiful as I am because it doesn't matter how beautiful, how young, how fit, how hung, how rich you are, if you do not feel good in yourself, it will never be enough. I know people with hundreds of thousands of Instagram followers who still feel ugly and unattractive. And it doesn't matter what you're working with physically. We all have our shit. We all have our shit. That is not an excuse for saying I'm unlovable. And I get it, a lot of people look at me and say, okay, you're attractive, you're tall, you're confident. Why would you have ever felt insecure? Well. I did. I was literally bullied to the point of crying every single day from my youth into high school. There was not a day I didn't go home weeping and in tears. Starting in seventh grade, I was the same height that I am now, but about 50 pounds lighter. I had a family member who used to call me the albino anorexic because I was so pale and skinny. My mother used to have my father follow me to the bathroom to make sure I wasn't bulimic because I was so skinny. And while it's much less noticeable now, I have had a chest deformity since I was a kid where my rib cage curves inwards. And yeah, I've put on some muscle so it's less noticeable, but when I was a kid on the swim team, people used to poke and make fun of me and say, why do you have a hole in your chest? What's wrong with you? Why are you built that way? What? There's something deformed about you. So before you jump on the bandwagon of who are you to talk about being uncomfortable or not feeling beautiful, I so felt that. And with my background of being a professional actor, being a theater major in college, you have no idea how often I was rejected. My level of rejection was very high, that I would go on auditions two, three times a day. I worked for seven years as a professional actor in Chicago, and I only booked two commercials out of literally thousands of auditions. Every time my agent would force me to go onto a modeling call, I'd get rejected, and I'd be surrounded by all these really beautiful people, and it was clear that I'm like, I really don't know why I'm here. I'm not in league with them. So I totally get what it feels like to not be enough. And I've also had the immense privilege to now be on the other side of things where I do get a lot of validation from my body, but that was not my experience for the entire identity formation part of my life. And I have had to do a tremendous amount of healing work to get to the point where I can believe that and I can feel it and I can feel good in myself, that I can genuinely say I'm healed. But you know what? It wasn't the body that gave it to me. It wasn't my external appearance changing. I mean, sure, getting people to actually see me attractive helped, but the real work happened inside. The real work happened from day after day, going in and excavating, reevaluating, asking for healing, meditating, praying, learning to fully love myself, regardless of what it was like out here. And I am a huge believer that somebody's inner light shines through their face. And if you are connected with your soul, if you are feeling beautiful within, then people are gonna see that and find you beautiful without as well. All right, so enough of this preachy shit. You came here to find out, can you make your dick bigger? And if so, how much and what do we need to do? Well, the answer to that is how much patience have you got and how much do you really want it? So first and foremost, I just wanna say that everything that I'm gonna share today is easily found online. One of my favorite resources for personal logs and experiences and stories with PE, penis enlargement, is Reddit. If you look up the subreddits, either a jelk for you or getting bigger, you'll find a lot of great resources there and routines and stories and anecdotes that'll be really helpful. But first and foremost, what are reasonable expectations? Can we actually go from this to this? Well, that'd be a little bit of a stretch, no pun intended. From the many hundreds of hours of reading personal accounts and blogs and journals of people exploring PE, it seems entirely reasonable to gain anywhere up to one to two inches in length and about the same in girth. There are certainly outliers. There are certainly people who have gained more often through years of work, tenacity, or just some very unique biological oddities, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But frankly, it should be pretty simple for someone to gain either a half inch in length or a half inch in girth in just a few months. But this is a little bit like going to the gym. And going to the gym, if you've got moderate genetics and a moderate diet and you're not taking PEDs, you're not taking gear, roids, juice, whatever you want to call it, you're going to be putting in hours and hours and hours of work. Many days you're going to say, is this even making an effective change? I don't feel all that different. I don't see that much of a difference because 
change takes time and also we're not really good at observing it because we're with ourselves during the transition. So you have to be willing to be in it for the long haul and expect that, hey, I'm not worried about the results. If I keep doing it, I'm going to trust, I'm going to relax, I'm gonna enjoy the process and not be overly focused on measurements, right? Like do not keep measuring every day, every week. Like, let it be an occasional thing and be a happy surprise. Something people also ask about, which is also a fair gym analogy is, are gains permanent? And I'd say they're about as permanent as your body changes at the gym. If you go and hit it hard for a year and get snatched, get fit, and then go sit on the couch for six months and binge on potato chips every day, you're not gonna be maintaining those results. So I think it's important to approach it as a lifestyle, as something you enjoy doing, and something that you have at least a basic maintenance routine, similar to like, hey, I got super fit, but I'm still gonna go to the gym several days a week and put in my time. I maybe don't have to push as hard, but I'm gonna keep it going. So let's start the conversation by talking about dick enlargement methods that I would not recommend for you. The first one being silicone. Now, the Kardashians may be injecting it into their booty, but you probably do not want to inject it into your dick or testicles. There are plenty of men that do. For the fun thing about silicone is you can pretty much blow it up to whatever size you want, or at least the skin around your penis, any size you want. So no, your dick won't actually be getting larger, but people will inject liquid silicone underneath the skin of their penis, forcing the skin to grow thicker, longer. There's a guy online that you can find who has created uh, literally a four foot long, about this thick dick from liquid silicone and also pumping and as a combination. It is definitely more of a fetish thing. Now the biggest reason that I do not recommend this, apart from the fact that you're not ever going to be able to have normal sex, is that it is a huge health hazard. Because liquid silicone has these tiny little particles that can then start to migrate through your body and if they enter your bloodstream, they can travel to your lungs and then it will suffocate you in a matter of hours. And there are horrific stories you can read online and see in the news about guys who have blown up their junk with silicone and then ended up dying in the hospital not that long thereafter. So while it can be fun to see your junk blown up to elephantine proportions, I please, please, please be safe. As with everything in life, always consider the long-term implications and prioritize your health and well-being, first and foremost. Something of a similar ilk, but quite a lot less dangerous, is using facial fillers to do the same thing. So here in the United States, you can go to certain dermatologists and they'll inject hydraulic acid under the skin and it makes it a little uh, thicker. It feels a little poofy, a little jello-like, but it will increase the girth of your member. And if you go down to other parts of the world, like Mexico, particularly Tijuana or Brazil, they can also do thicker facial fillers, like Elan's, uh, that is lasts for about four years rather than just one year and feels a little bit more lifelike, or even permanent fillers like PMMA, hard to fill. Similar but different to silicone, general advice is don't put permanent things in your body, right? Like if it's something that dissolves over years, you know, worst case scenario, your body rejects it, you don't like it, it's gonna go away in time. But I read a statistic online that it's something like 80% of people who got permanent facial fillers somewhere in their body ended up being unhappy with the results over time. So I would not recommend the permanent ones, but if you just want some quick girth gains and that sounds good to you, it's pretty pain-free, it's pretty quick, it's relatively inexpensive, especially if you go the Mexico route. But the reason I haven't used it for me is that it does prevent other forms of exercise from being used. You can't really do manual exercises, you can't do hanging, which I'll be talking about in a little bit, and there is a very good chance that your penis will be less symmetrical and a little bit lumpy, especially over time. And if that's your thing, if you don't really care about aesthetics, you just want a bigger dick, that might be a good option for you. Another good option for quick girth gains is pumping. Me personally, I am not a huge fan of an air pump because it never feels good to me when I use it. I actually feel a little bit of pain. Now there's pain like a really like good stretch you feel at the gym and then there's pain where it feels like you're doing damage to your body. And when I've explored air pumping, I've felt more of the latter. Water pumping, by the other hand, has heat. It has a little bit more pressure because the water molecules are bigger and I find less swelling. So if you've ever seen videos or explored yourself or someone else who does pumping, often the penis expands with lymph, with this fluid and it becomes sponge-like and kind of feels like a little bit like a donut, looks like one too. If you pump to that point, 
you're probably not gonna get a ton of permanent gains. Like it's gonna get really big for a short period of time and then go back to normal. But if you do lighter pumping where it's lower pressure, shorter intervals, where you just feel the actual tissue of the penis itself expanding, but you're not getting that crazy bloat, and you do that regularly, like once a day, once every other day, those gains can begin to become permanent. But when we overdo it, when we go too far, then we start developing more scar tissue, more adhesions, and that's when we start to run into bigger problems. You can find lots of stories on YouTube, specifically with the bath made of guys talking about their experience. It's not uncommon for someone to use it for a year in experience, like an inch, inch and a half of girth gains and maybe even some length gains as two half inch, three quarters, maybe even a full inch. So something low stakes, easy to do, pretty damn low risk, feels good, kind of fun, do some light pumping. I recommend a water pump like the Bathmate or something like it. If you prefer the air pump because of convenience, I would definitely recommend doing a hot wrap with an electric heating pad. And two really good companies are Thick Wall Cylinders and LA Pumps. But you can certainly find cheaper stuff on Amazon. Just make sure that whatever you're using, you have an air gauge so you know actually how hard you're pumping. And again, keep it on the lighter side if you want gains to be permanent and to be lower risk and to not just be a dramatic inflation for the time being. Now, of course, girth is wonderful from a sexual perspective. The kind of consensus I've read online Line and with sexual partners is that somewhere between like five and a half inches and just over six inches is considered really ideal for sex. And of course, this varies sexual partner to sexual partner. And it also varies based on if you're having heterosexual or homosexual sex. Vaginas and rectums can fit different sizes. In my own personal experience, women generally only want a dick that is so big. Once it gets bigger than that, it doesn't feel good, it doesn't look good. Gay men, in contrast, I tend to find are a little bit more of the opinion of the bigger the better. Gay men tend to fetishize masculinity, right? Like the bigger the muscles you have, the bigger the dick, the more mask presenting you are, the more attractive you're considered in gay culture. So that's something to keep in mind too, is what do sexual partners actually want and what brings you joy? Is your goal to pleasure people effectively? Is your goal for yourself? These are important things to ask. As important as girth is for sexual pleasure, the thing that people always want to know is what's your number? And they're not asking girth, they're asking length. So how do we make our dick longer? If your goal is to just gain about a half inch or so, just start stretching it out yourself. Grab hold hard behind the head, pull to one side, hold for about five breaths, pull to the other side, hold for another five breaths, pull it down between your legs, hold for another five breaths, and repeat a few times. Do this for about five, 10 minutes. Take a break, come back later in the day, do it again, do it about five, six times a day. Start to loosen up some of that connective tissue and you should see some pretty noticeable length gains in a short amount of time. If you want larger gains, like you want more of an inch, two inches, three inches possibly even, then you need to do something a little bit more. Now you've probably seen penis extenders advertised online where you like strap it into a belt around your waist or attach it to rods. Those are good, but two things. First is you need to get one that can pull with a minimum of six pounds of force. And most extenders online only pull with two to three pounds of force. So you need to find one that has a lot higher tension. And the second thing is you have to be willing to wear it for long periods of time. And I'm talking hours a day. And they're not the most comfortable and they're not the most convenient to wear. Like you can't hide them under clothes anyway, really. There's one version you can, but doesn't have that much force. So I, I've had one, I've worn it. I just ultimately have not found that it gave me the results I wanted and it ultimately proved that practical. An alternative, and this sounds kind of terrifying and scary, but it works, is weight hanging. So basically you get a device that's like a clamp and I recommend a clamp rather than a vacuum suction device because the vacuum suction can create blisters on the head of your penis. You attach this clamp to your shaft and then hang weight plates off the bottom. You have to again get above about six pounds of force, but really above 10 pounds pounds, maybe even in the 20s. I recently came across my journal I was keeping when I was exploring weight hanging about six or seven years ago, and I got up to hanging about 25 pounds for several sets a day off my dick. Like that sounds terrifying and the image is horrifying, but it can work. It can really start to one, stretch out the ligaments holding the penis in place, and two, eventually start stretching the tissue itself. For a lot of guys, if you get an erection and you feel down there, you can feel where the penis enters the perineum, the bottom of your pelvis floor and feel how it just basically exits the body. That's how most guys are. But for some of us, we feel that it actually starts to travel up the pubic bone, one inch, two inch, three inch, even four inches before it then exits. And if you find yourself in a similar situation, that means that a lot of that tissue can be stretched out and go from being internal penal structure to being external. And if that's the case for you, you may find that you're able to make a lot of length
strength gains rather quickly because all you're doing is just releasing those tendons and ligaments, that fascia, and you're just moving what's already there more outside. If you don't have that or you've already stretched all that out, then the gains are going to have to come by slowly elongating the tissue because of tension over time. Weight hanging is effective. It does take time, but it takes less time than an extender, usually about an hour a day, sometimes up to two hours. Sometimes even less, people report gains from just doing it 20 minutes a day. But you are strapping a substantial amount of weight to your cock. That can be really scary and intimidating. And you just, of course, want to be mindful and careful and make sure that you're not doing any lasting damage. Again, I'm not saying you should do this. And if you are going to do it, please, please, please do all your research. Look up online uh, where you should go. I think Mailhanger is a really great website for resources and also device that's well made and also affordable because you can find hangers on there that are like $200, $300 and it's, it's a piece of plastic. Come on. So that's how I would approach length gains. If you want substantial girth gains more than pumping and a bathmate will give you, you will also need to start doing what's called clamping, which is basically blood flow reduction. So if you've ever seen a guy with a really huge cock, chances are very good he's experienced what is called a preopism, where he's had an erection that has not gone down for many, many hours. And <laughs> that's dangerous. Like, like your dick could actually <laughs> die. You have to go to the hospital if that ever happens to you. Like you should never have an erection that lasts more than four hours, like the Viagra ads tell you, but that sustained boner forced the tissue to expand. And so clamping does the same thing where you get an erection full force, clamp down at the base. You could try it with your hands, but your hands are going to fatigue. So you'll probably need a manual device, like a cable clamp, something that keeps like your cords behind your computer or plugged into your wall in line. And you force a 110% erection for about five minutes, seven minutes. Then you release it, you massage it, you go back to full erection, you do it again, you do it a third time, and that way you're forcing more blood into the chamber and over time it expands. That is considered a high risk activity. It is something that is can lead to more damage, so please be careful. I would also recommend that that be an advanced technique, one that you work up towards and also explore like similar techniques like using your hand, forcing blood through it, massaging it. Those are some really great ways to start building up in that direction. And lastly, if you want to explore more of a medical frontier with penis enlargement, there is a surgery that will release your suspensory ligament that attaches your penis to your body. It makes great flaccid gains, but really doesn't do much for erect gains, and your penis will start to point downwards, most likely. So at this point, it's not entirely recommended. There is a penis implant that you can get where they basically insert a silicone sheet around your penis. It's by a doctor in California that you can find online. I would, again, not recommend it because uh, if you go on Reddit and search for this implant, you'll find that a lot of guys have serious complications, serious pain, it's deformed their penis, they end up having it removed. You're inserting a sheet of plastic around your dick, a very movable part of your body, like, I'd be very careful about that one, and it's very expensive too. With stem cell research advancing, there is a chance that we'll be seeing more and more coming out with stem cells for dick enlargement. I have read accounts of people going down to clinics in South America or Central America where things are lax and having that done, but before you inject stem cells anywhere in your body, you really should look at the dangers and how it can really fuck you up. We will get to a point where it is better, it is safer, but there are a lot of inherent risks, so we'll hold off on that one for right now. The last thing you might find online is chemical penis enlargement, where basically you take a vacillator, something where you inject it into your penis directly, it forces an erection for three to five hours, erection goes down, but again you've been at full erection for that full time and it's forced the penis to grow. The drug that works really well for that is called Caverject, but it's no longer sold in the United States, so it'd be much more difficult to find. There's a fairly well-known male escort from Montreal that you can find online who has grown his penis two inches longer and two inches thicker by doing these injections five days a week over the course of two years. But A, the erections are incredibly painful and B, it becomes tremendously expensive because you need bigger and bigger doses as your body adjusts. And suddenly what kept you hard for five hours initially a few months go by and it's only working for five minutes. Something that you can explore I have not explored it personally, but there are resources out there for you if that's something you want to pursue. So from my experience, those are the only things really worth talking about that make real changes. No pills, no hypnotherapy, no massage from a crazy person on the corner of the street is going to make your dick grow. But there are things you can do if this matters to you. But the thing I'm just gonna reiterate from the beginning of the video is why does this matter so much to you?
what is it gonna give you? And if the answer is joy, pleasure, a more full experience of yourself and the life you feel called to live, then go for it. You know, I work out at the gym every day because I like having a strong body. I like how I feel, I like how I look. I similarly do my dick exercises pretty much every day because I like how it feels, I like how it looks. I love the joy it gives me, I love the joy it gives my husband as he holds it and touches it and plays with it. And I think those are all beautiful reasons to explore this. I hope this video has been valuable and interesting for you. I have had people for a long time asking me to create a video on this topic and I've resisted because A, I didn't know how it fit in with my channel and B, you know, it's an uncomfortable topic and I wanted to approach it in a good way. So I hope this was valuable for you. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out and connect with me one-on-one -on -one if you have further questions. And if you're concerned with the bigger picture of how do I live a joyful, integrated, happy, spiritual, sexually vibrant life, then that's why I'm here. That's why I run this YouTube channel. That's why I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Let me know how these things affect you and share with me how things are going on your adventure. I'm Kay. This is Ecstatic Self. It's a pleasure to be here with you today.